Christian Dahl for the Fela and Fobo uh, virtual hurling session. So today we're going to go through the core skills of the game. Uh, this is something that you'll be able to do in pairs in your backyard or on your local field. And uh, my name is Neil McManus. I'm a member of Christian Dahl Club. I also play for the county team. And joining me is uh, one of the best Cogiers, one of the best hurlers in the county today. Hi, <laughs> my name is Orla, and I'm. My name is Paddy Burke, I play for Christian Dahl, I'm from Antrim, I play centre half five. Okay, so for our warm up, just going to be jogging out to the 20 yard line, back in, then bringing the knees up in front, and jogging back in. Okay, heel flicks out to the 20 yard line and back in. Very important to be well warmed up before we start the session. Okay, jogging out backwards. So as we're ready to move in all directions whenever the session starts. Okay, side skips. Getting the hands up above the head. Okay, high skips. Gets us ready for landing after we've caught a ball coming back down onto the ground. Hamstring sweeps. Trying to get a stretch on all the major muscle groups before we move into the session. Okay, quad pulls. Just a couple of seconds each side. Not holding anything for too long. And whenever we get out to the 20 yard line, we always jog back in, so as we continue to warm up the muscles. Okay, warming up the wrists and the ankles at the same time. Ankles pushed into the ground and get some mobility into the wrists and the ankles. We'll have to have them both moving nice and fast. A few arm swings in either direction, across the body. And that's us ready to get stuck into the hurling. Okay, so once we've got the body warmed up, we'll just start to get the eye in. Just a few strikes of the ball back and forward. Let's get the hands warmed up, using left and right, and just moving off the spot. Always moving, never static whenever we're striking the ball. Few low balls, get the first touch in. Okay then, yeah, a few jumps. Just warming up, getting the legs ready and we're parting off the ground and landing back onto the ground with good form. And a few hand passes going as well. So coming down and hand passing the ball as well. And a few dips of the ball as well. Just getting used to going into that. Bent over position, picking it up, moving forward into the ball, getting under it and leaving for your partner to collect and make a successful pick as well. So when we've done these three or four drills, two or three times each, then we will get ready and move into the first drill of the session. Okay, the first core skill of hurling that we're going to go into is catching. So we're just gonna throw the ball up to each other just to get familiar with the catch and technique hurl behind the hand just to protect it and just get the eye in uh, so this is how we'll start just getting nicely up off the ground and returning back onto the ground in a sure-footed manner ok 
okay. So we'll then progress this skill into throwing it slightly out to the side, meaning the footwork has to be a little bit better and the player has to move off centre out, collect the ball, maybe off left and off right. So in a match the ball won't always come straight to us, we'll just have to move to where the ball is going to be and collect it. Always making sure to have the hurl behind the hand for safety, for protection of your fingers. Like so. Okay, the third step is going to be getting us nice and comfortable when uh, collecting a ball um, out of the sky with an opponent on us. So Orla is going to receive the ball here out of the sky. Patty is going to put on some token resistance just to ensure that Orla is protecting her hand properly. It's good. So keeping the hurl behind the hand so she's always protected and she doesn't get her hand or fingers hurt. Good. And then switch positions uh, so as the rules change and everybody gets a chance to do this. Good. That's good. Okay, so the second core skill we're going to work through here is striking on the ground. So with your partner, you'll strike the ball to them. They'll make sure to get it stopped out to the side, shift their feet into the position using right and left. That's good. Just about 15 yards apart. Always in control of the ball, moving it off left and right. Try and make sure the ball doesn't get past you. Keep it in front. And good strong strike. Okay, so when we've got comfortable moving the ball along the ground, off left and right, we want to be able to do this in a match situation whenever we're marking an opponent, shoulder to shoulder. So this is called a clash. All you need is the two uh, people from your household and line up three or four balls in front of you, just as you can see in the picture here. And moving off, you just stay together and strike. That just gives us the confidence that we'll need during the game. So the closer you are, the less chance there is of getting hurt. Okay, so after, after you've got uh, confident that you can do that shoulder to shoulder, we're going to make it more like a match situation where you are moving at a higher speed. So just build it up gradually and this time we'll move into a jog and we'll go for it again, shoulder to shoulder. Whenever you're in nice and tight, you won't get hurt. You're always going to be safe and it just gives us the confidence to tackle. Okay, so the third core skill we're going to practice here is the hand pass. So we're going to hand pass to hand, just standing pretty much in the same spot, a couple of steps in and out from the ball, getting nice and comfortable, making sure we have a good clean hand pass. There's always a little bit of daylight between throwing it up and striking the ball with your hand, as Paddy and Orla are doing here. So this is something that we know referees are always uh, picking up on more and more. Uh, so they're trying to cut out throwing, so we need to make sure the hand passes are good and legitimate all times. Okay, so the next stage of the hand passing drill is to take it on the move, moving left and right, because you'll have an opponent marking you, so you'll have to make space, move into the space to collect the ball and uh, hopefully throw them off the, the centre of where you're going to be. So moving out left, moving out right, making sure the footwork's good. Okay. So using both hands as Paddy has there. Depending on which side you're on. Yep. That's good. And if you're able to hand pass off both sides, you'll be able to use that if an opponent is staying predominantly on one side of you.
So the third stage of the hand pass drill is to receive the ball, set it on the ground, lift it, spin away from the contact which will be coming during a match and deliver the hand pass. So this is a very useful tool whenever the game is compact in around the middle and there's a lot of bodies in there. So secure the ball, spin out of it and deliver the hand pass. Okay, so the fourth core skill that we're going to work on is striking uh, along the ground to start with, um, concentrating on a good first touch and striking it back to your partner. So just make sure we're using both left and right, trying to get the ball up into hand with one touch. and always moving. Okay, so we're now going to progress that into striking to the hand, again using left and right and taking a step towards the ball when it's coming towards you and then moving back into position. As we know, hurling has progressed massively now towards possession, so this is a vital, vital skill to be able to use in a match situation. So we're just going to progress that forward into using a 20 meter by 20 meter square as you can see marked out by the yellow cones. So the two players stay within the square and strike the ball and move into a new position to receive the ball uh, and a pass from their uh, partner. So we're going to vary it. Some balls go into hand, some balls going along the ground. Just adding in the movement. Adding in some hand passes whenever we're closer than 20 metres, trying to bring in a few more skills that we've used today through this session. So we'll do this for a minute and then we will take a break and do it three more times. Some fancy footwork from Paddy Burke there. Okay, so our first uh, skills challenge is the roll lift. So this is how many roll lifts can you do properly? They all have to be done properly in a 30 second period. So we'll get Paddy to go in three, two, one, go. Stop. That was really good, Paddy. And there's a ball came out of nowhere there in the middle of it all. Uh, Paddy McNaughton's to blame for that. So uh, that was very, very good. That was 38 for Paddy Burke inside a 30 second uh, window. So now it's time for Orla. I think if Paddy McNaughton was to get involved in this one, he could find himself picking up an injury. So three, two, one, go. Stop. Would you believe it? It's a dead heat at 38. Uh, a, few, 38. <laughs> a few questionable ones in, uh, in Orla's uh, 30 seconds there. Um, but 
Okay, so that's the first skills challenge. So how many can you do roll lifts in 30 seconds? So the second skills challenge is hurling tennis. So whenever the ball arrives to you, you have one touch to put it back onto the other side of the court. It's not allowed to touch the grass and you only have one touch. So whoever wins the rally gets a point. So that point would go to Orla as it touched the ground on Paddy's side. So with that point, and that one too. And that would be Paddy's point. So two touches on Orla's side, so that means it's a point for Paddy. That's two each. Three, two, Orla wins that rally. The third skills challenge is, as you can see here, a ball between uh, the two players and they will be, it's called uh, head, shoulders, knees and toes. So that will be called out and they have to place their hands on their heads, their shoulders, their knees, or their toes. And then whenever the shout comes for the ball, we have to see who reacts first and it's first to three. So heads, shoulders, knees, toes, heads, Knees, toes, ball. <laughs> <laughs> so Orla wins that one. Okay. Back into position again. And knees, toes, heads, shoulders, ball. <laughs> one each, one each. Heads, shoulders, ball. <laughs> <laughs> Good early shout to catch them out. So that was 2-1 to Paddy, and you can do that yourselves and have three three rounds of it. Connor McAllister, and the goalkeeper. Okay, so the first drill we're gonna do uh, with Connor here, uh, our county goalkeeper in Nets, is Paddy and Orla have five balls in front of them. Connor will take his position with his helmet on in the goals, and Paddy and Orla both have to shoot right down the line into either corner of the net. Connor doesn't know which of the two players are going to strike first. He just has to react. And as soon as Orla has struck her shot or Paddy has struck their shot, it'll be up to Connor to get across and make the save at the other corner of the net. So three, two, one, go. Stop Connor. So for any aspiring goalkeeper you can see Connor was using very good foot movement to get across the goals very quickly and always had his body behind the ball. For our second goalkeeping drill uh, you see Paddy is in position here on the 13 yard line about 15 yards out from the, the net and on the other side Orla is on the 13 yard line again about the, the width of the keep net apart. Connor's in goals so Connor will move to Paddy's side here, whenever he strikes the post with his hurl, that gives Paddy the indication to shoot. Paddy will shoot across Connor's body and Connor will try and make the save, then get across to the far side, hit the post on that side of the field, and Orla will then strike whenever Paddy uh, or whenever Connor has hit the post. Okay, so that's uh, all the drills complete for today's session. Uh, I'd like to thank Conor McAllister, Arlo O'Hara and Paddy Burke for helping me out with the uh, online session here for Phil and Fobo. Uh, every drill you've seen, make sure to repeat it four times. That should keep the window of time down to about 45 minutes for the entire session. You couldn't be getting these drills demonstrated by any better people. Uh, these are 
the leading hurlers and camogiers within our county so uh, please use it hopefully you have plenty of fun doing it in your backyard with your friends and your family uh,